Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, wanted to go over a um, what we're what we're in the process of doing on uh, the uh, Ford truck that uh, we got the engine out. He had a little bit of problems with the uh, back pressure valve not working properly, and since we live in Washington State, it really doesn't get cold enough to um, really have it. So, um, so what we are going to do is going to um, bypass it. It's not that hard. They do sell them aftermarket. They're kind of expensive, and so I wanted to show you after uh, after we did a little bit of research. Um, how to um, how to bypass it without spending a whole crap load of money and it's really not that hard once I show you what's going on uh, so basically I've already you already got the pedestal back on there um, but essentially what I want to do is take the turbo off obviously and uh, remove the pedestal and uh, step one is to take the push valve out of the inside of the pedestal and essentially take a freeze plug I don't know if you can see that it's a inch and three-quarter freeze plug and it fits in there perfect um, takes a little bit of tapping we just used a uh, bearing race slash seal installer and uh, pushed it in there and then put the snap ring back in place so it holds it there the um, Benefit to doing that is that um, uh, oil pressure gets in where this spring is, um, and uh, basically it uh, that's how it uses the uses the oil pressure to um, push the valve. So the cool part is is that if that seal goes bad, all the oil will basically bypass and all that. So by putting the freeze plug in there, it seals all that off, and um, that way it doesn't run the risk of having any oil leaks it makes sure that the turbo gets absolutely all of the oil it's going to need and um, doesn't have any risk of failure we also put on the um, on the freeze plug we put on the uh, sleeve sealer which is essentially um, the same stuff you'd use for like injector cups uh, and whatnot so we put that high temp sleeve sealer retainer sealer on there and uh, pressed her in and put the snap ring on there and then on the back side just took a quarter uh, NTP tap and tapped it out and then put this plug in there to plug it off so that way it won't leak it's a really common uh, this is a really common uh, bypass method uh, would, Nick did a lot of research on this the other day and uh, so I wanted to do a video on it because I wasn't really sure if there was a video on this or not. So I thought that'd be really helpful for anybody that wanted to uh, possibly do this. Part two is the actual turbo itself. So so the back side of the turbo okay, is where the, so inside of here is where the back pressure is where the back pressure valve is just like that so so when it's cold out the uh, computer tells it to close and that's what makes it sound like a jet airplane out the tailpipe it basically allows it to build up heat uh, so simply this this plate is just riveted oops <laughs> so this plate is just riveted on so you can just grind the rivets off and then this has got a snap ring on the end of it Take the snap ring off, slide it out, and uh, basically what that does is that allows the exhaust to get out here uh, without this being in the way. Because even with it wide open, it doesn't open wide open. It's still partially closed, which disrupts the exhaust flow from the uh, from the going to the turbo. Uh, once you get that all out of there. Take one of these small, what the hell size is that? Three quarter inch freeze plug. And since this side's already sealed off from the factory, take the other side and press the freeze plug in there. 
Install the snap ring. Voila! Now you have a free flowing exhaust. Got rid of all this back pressure bull crap. And uh, I mean, because realistically, it, it don't get cold enough, don't even need it. And uh, you know, that's just one less thing to fail, especially with the oil inside of there. At the, you know, that could be that could be a bad situation. You could lose a couple of quarts of oil pretty damn fast if, uh, if that thing you know so decided to fail. So other than that, uh, we're waiting for uh, the turbo rebuild kit. Uh, he's going to rebuild the turbo today, and uh, get that all happy. And the oil pan should be here today. We can get the oil pan on. Um, so since my last video, got the whole front end rebuilt. Put a new water pump. Got the timing chain on there. Um, Use the all of the Ford sealants that they asked to use because it uh, doesn't make the oil foam up and all that. Diesels don't like foamy oil. So got everything all cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, <clears throat> He took everything apart and cleaned it all up real nice. I uh, did also notice that uh, when we had it apart that there was some chafing going on on the wiring harness. Uh, it was rubbing on, I think, the intake tube. I'll have to look when we uh, put this put it back together. That way I can give you a little better idea of what, uh, what was going on there. But it was chafing, so we put some anti-chafing on there, taped it all up real good, make sure that's happy. Um, I'm going to go through and dialect grease all of these connectors. Um, we're not doing the valve cover gaskets right now. They look good. Um, he plans on probably doing injectors down the road anyway, which you can do in the truck. They're not that hard to do. Uh, we'll probably do the valve cover gaskets then and the wiring harness, but everything looks good. So we're just going to dialect or grease it for now. Make sure to uh, keep it all clean and cool and not have any corrosion or anything like that. So anyhow, that is that. And once we get the pan here and uh, get the turbo rebuilt, we'll be throwing this bad boy back in. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Oh, my hand's going numb. <laughs> the, uh, let's see, where are they at? So these, uh, these bad boys here, um, these really like to leak a lot. And basically all this is is a compression fitting. So when you tighten this up, that's what seals it all up and as I said in the other video that these were leaking real bad um, as you can see this one is just this one is loose it shouldn't be that loose so it's like completely worn out even tightened up it was loose and you can see the discoloration on the uh, exhaust pipe it's been leaking for a long time so we were going to uh, replace those gaskets and um, I'll just run that, but we found these. These are nice. So what this is, these are an updated version. So these are an upgraded version of that with the flex pipe makes it way easier to install um, they use a uh, they actually use a regular gasket just a regular exhaust gasket instead of the compression style gasket a um, lot more reliable comes with all of the hardware I mean this even comes with the uh, with the allen heads I mean <laughs> wrench to tighten everything up really nice kit uh, it should be way better to do. Shameless plug for the diesel site. That's where he got it from. Really good stuff. They were really helpful too. Uh, answered a lot of his questions. But uh, really nice piece. Should check out. So we'll be putting those on there as well. And uh, let's see here. What else? Okay, here is the... Uh, you got to put this in the cooling system 
In case you didn't know, the diesel coolant additive, you have to put that in there or the engine will electrolysis like you have no idea. And this is the uh, RTV that I was talking about. Um, you know, they could have gave us a little more than five ounces, but you know, um, anyhow, there is that. And they highly recommend to use this when doing the oil pan and the timing cover. It, um, like I said, it doesn't, for some reason, it doesn't, if you use regular silicone, the oil will foam up. Um, we jokingly said it, it, it's gray, so it, it almost looks like Honda Bond, which it probably is, to be honest with you, but <laughs> they don't have any ingredients in there, so. So anyhow, um, and we got all the oil and coolant and everything here. So this weekend, we should be uh, putting this bad boy back in and hopefully doing smoky burnouts uh, by Sunday. Anyhow, uh, that's why we got going on. And I uh, just wanted to give you a, a little tip on how to bypass the back pressure valve and do the updated uh, exhaust. So anyhow... I appreciate you watching, and uh, hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll uh, we'll give you an update video probably this weekend on, uh, hopefully I'm going to try and do some live videos on the installation, kind of give you uh, all a, uh, you know, insight onto little tips and tricks on what to do to take it apart. Anyhow, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next time.